No black cats, just straight facts. Triple P certified. Listen, we can talk about odds all day. It doesn't matter what the odds are. It matters what's gonna happen. Welcome to the Triple P. It's the Burke Flavor Suit. We are going to be talking about UFC 300. If you're looking for the breakdown for Allen versus Curtis 2, that is going to be probably right next to this episode. Dan's here. Alex is coming in in just one second. And we're going to have a fourth person on the show, a special guest, joining in just a couple seconds. we got Joe Selecki coming on. He's going to talk about his upcoming fight with Grant Dawson and uh, hopefully give us some picks for UFC 300 as well. It's an early predictions episode. Welcome to the show. Alex is here. And without further ado, let's welcome our very special guest, the one and only Joe Selecki, Jersey Joe, coming out of North Carolina these days. What up, Joe? What's up, guys? How's it going? Right, let me turn this sideways so I can fit in with everybody else. You're there good. Is. Doing there well. You go. Doing well. well. On. How's it going? Hope you had a happy <laughs> Easter, happy Transgender Day of Vigilance, whatever it's called. Hope it's all good. It's crazy, yeah, Anyway, no we, comment. That's wild. Yeah, happy <laughs> Easter, Joe. Happy Easter. Did you yes, hunt sir. eggs? Did you have the whole? Did you have the whole family out uh, in dressed to the nines on Easter Sunday? How, how was it? Yeah, well, you know, uh, we're up here. It's just us up here. Me and uh, my wife and our kids. That's it. So, uh, real low key. Went to church. Down there. You're down there now. You're not up here. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we <laughs> moved up from Wilmington, so for us, it's up. Oh, fair, fair. west. Oh yeah, real low key. We just got up, went to church. Uh, stayed up way too late watching Wyman's fight. Got up, went to church, came home. We're lazy all day, sat outside, and I had a low base cardio to do that night. And that was it. It was a nice, simple day. Yeah, so, Joe, I went to church, too, right? And I'm there, and the priest is just, like, constantly talking about, hey, you know, you guys got to come every week. You guys got to come every week. I'm like, yo, we're here. Like, you're talking to the wrong people. We're all, I'm like, we're all in the building right now. Like, I'm like, he literally said, he was like, listen, if you're not coming to church every week and you're trying to go your own way like Frank Sinatra, you're going to hell. That's what he says. I'm like, like yo, I'm, I'm, like, I'm doing what you're saying right now. I'm like, this is like when someone doesn't show up for work and your boss is pissed off and they're like talking about how you got to show up for work. I'm like, bro, you're talking to the wrong people. Luke, like, it's because the church is packed on Easter and Christmas and it's not packed every week, my man. It would be like running the guys that are at practice because the guys that missed. And that's happened. Yeah, I'm you- already here. I don't need to do sprints. I'm already here, man. And that has happened in my high school wrestling life. Like that is hundred percent happened. <laughs> and but that that actually makes more sense because then it kind of like rallies the guys together to like really get them going. It's like yo, I don't want to have to run again. The priest ain't making us run. He's just giving me a five minute ear beat, and then it's like you know making me less likely to come the next week. But anyway, um, never thought I'd be a, uh, a Christmas and Easter guy. I mean, I, I was dragged to church every Sunday my whole life, and I, I looked down on those people. Man. You get busy. You get very busy. Anyway, um, Joe. Bring us up to speed. You got a fight coming up with Grant Dawson. Last time we saw you, you were on TV. What's going on? How's everything been? How you doing? Tell us what's going on. Yeah, man. Last time we uh, you guys saw me was not so great. <laughs> but uh, been good since then, man. Yeah, I came out of the fight. Um, I was back in the gym on Monday, you know, so um, I wasn't 100% healthy. My shoulder was real bad and uh, just trying to come off of that. But uh, was doing what I can that Monday, like right back to work. So, um yeah, man, just been training, teaching, the same as always, and uh, waiting for a call, you know. So was hoping to get on the Atlantic City card. I think it was probably best um, that it didn't work out because I don't know that I would have been 100% in time for a full camp for that. Um, so, you know, I kind of said goodbye to the opportunity to fight in Jersey, and then here they are with Newark. So uh, can't wait, man. Just starting the beginnings of camp a couple weeks ago or, you know, maybe a pre-camp. Um, so we've known for about, you know, 12 weeks out now. So, uh just having plenty of time, getting ready, and training hard. And being from New Jersey, I mean, isn't it funny that the two places you have the option to fight are the two worst places in all of New Jersey, <laughs> Atlantic City <laughs> and Newark? It must be because the the Pennsylvania Commission is so bad, we can't just go to Philly. Like, I don't understand. Or yeah, the last time they were in Philly was that Anderson Silva versus Forrest Griffin. I think so. So, but uh, they came to Pennsylvania since then in Pittsburgh, which is the same commission. And they had to deal, I don't know, you know, how involved in the regional MMA scene you guys are, but there's a guy by the name of Greg Serve who runs the Pennsylvania Commission, and he is unbearable. He is just, like, you can't wear a hat if you're cornering. Like, he hates MMA. He hates it. But it's the Boxing Commission, too. So he's a big boxing guy. He's very old school, and he hates MMA. And I remember reading at one of the PA or uh, Pittsburgh shows, they were like, 
the UFC has had such a difficult time this week. Like, they have no intention of coming back. And sure enough, here we are still going. Newark, Atlantic City, Newark, Atlantic City. Don't get mugged. Don't get stuck with a hypodermic needle. And, uh, <laughs> I'd, rather put you guys at, I'd rather put you guys in East, New, East Brunswick. Put, put them at Rutgers, like, where they play football. And, like, yeah. <laughs> like, run the risk of it raining. I mean, like, I don't even know. But, okay, so speaking of the commission. And it's funny because every time you come on the show, you're taking shots at the commissions. You got Herb Dean, now we got this guy Greg after us. All good. I hate the <laughs> yeah, we got Atlantic City. Thank God you weren't there with all of the misdeeds and 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 like <laughs> watch the card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch the well, watch the main card. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, so you had Gary Copeland back to back fights that he ref, eye poke situations. Yep. I mean, what do you think about the Chris Weidman fight? I, I don't really think it matters. Like even if they wanted to change it to a no contest, like he outclassed them before any eye pokes were a situation, you know? Um, I think they were one for one on the eye pokes in the second round. In the third round, yeah, on the way down for sure. But again, I, I'm not going to sit and say you're trying to foul your opponent ever. But if you go down in the middle of a flurry, like, and the ref doesn't stop it, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to, you're supposed to go get them. You know what I mean? Like, uh, if I tell you the amount of time, like, if I ever. If I've ever looked away and tell a ref that the guy's in my glove, I'm getting hit, you know, or I'm not getting the choke. Like, it's just kind of how it goes, you know. You can see he's just throwing combos. It's not – the other thing is what kind of desperation mode was he in that he's leading with his head, you know. So um, I'm not trying to say, like, he should have been eye poked, but uh, from what I read, even from McCarthy, he said that was the right thing to do. Like, you're supposed to go to the scorecards and go from there because enough of a fight. Why not a point deduction? Yeah, you, you could do that too. Dude, that, this well, is kind of my bigger question. My bigger question is: so Jim Miller said, Jim Miller came out and he said, "I've never eye poked anybody, and I believe it's done on purpose every time." That's what he said, right? So, oh, yeah. so there's that. There's that opinion out there, right? And then you have, uh, like, okay. So when I said, "What about the point deduction?" My bigger question on that is, why do you get a point taken away? arbitrarily the first or second time that it happens in some knee uh, to the groin or kick to the groin or eye poke situations. Like one thing that comes out to my mind is Paulo Costa versus Marvin Vittori. He got a point taken away, I believe by Jason Herzog. And I don't think there was a really a warning. I think it was just first foul, got a point taken away. Then you have this situation where, you know, you've been warned in the back. I'm a, you know, you know, the rules you fought before, you know, so you already know the rules, but then they remind you in the back, then you come out and fight. It happens in the fight. And honestly, you, you get a warning before it even happens where, you know, hey, watch your fingers. Yeah. I think that's where the mistake was. I do think that's where the mistake was, right? He was fighting with that kind of long guard, which is good. But he never once got the warning, close your fist or put your fingers up before the first eye poke. So then that kind of took the place as his first warning, right? Right. Um, but then after that, it was kind of one for one. So I think the only time you see the point deduction would be in the third. But at that point, I think the best thing to do is go to the scorecards because – uh, I, think, yeah, I was just listening. Well, I was just listening. Yeah, well, yeah, because um, yeah, yeah, I could see that. I could yeah. see that. Because if not, you can't go back because they already stopped it. Now, like the Tim Kennedy fight, I was listening to him talk about the other day. All the adrenaline, they already waved it off. You can't go back and start him again with a point deduction. So you got to go point deduction, go to the card. What would that have made it? A majority decision or a draw? Maybe? Yeah, Weidman still would have won, which is why it's kind of like well, Bruno even then, shut, shut the like, hell up, Bruno Silva. Because why like, I just can't stand the like. What, what drives me nuts about the media is like. Either way, before that, he wins in the court of public opinion. Like, you can put a no contest on his record. I believe he gets flat pegs as a former champion. So it doesn't change his money. And then, dude, we already saw him beat the crap out of this guy for two rounds and look like, like the old version of Wyman. So it's like, you can call it no contest if you want, but stop making every article about the eye pokes. Let's talk about how much better he looked, you know? Well, I think that in the court of public opinion, it's actually a loss because I'm looking at the comments and I'm seeing what people well, are saying. saying I think it's because they made such a big deal out of it. You know what I mean? Well, they showed in the replays. In, yes. Like, yeah. Yep. But the commentators only seem to have a narrative they want to push, and they get stuck on one thing. And I know in the heat of the moment, it's difficult not to. But it's like, dude, like, can we talk about the fact that he was chopping his head off with head kicks at the beginning? He teeped his guts out in the first minute. He was hurting him when, you know, a couple of years ago, he was getting hurt when he was getting touched. You know, this time, he looked like Weidman against Machido with his face in his face at the end of round two. Like, I can see how you go, okay, this, this, this sucks. And this is the problem, but we got to look at the good takeaways. You know, who was winning that fight minus the eye pokes? Why? Yeah. So, yeah. I'm biased. I'm too biased. I'm too close to the situation, but um, I don't yeah, know. That's fair. No, that's definitely fair. I mean, I definitely favor, like, I'm definitely more so inclined to be like, Bruno, stop. 
freaking rolling over and wincing and you know i i hate even wincing in a fight the guy's wincing in a fight i'm annoyed i'm like yo why are you wincing why did you did you not expect this to be painful like so yeah yeah. but that's just uh but anyway so all right moving on from the wyman situation uh we gotta there was another thing i wanted to bring up to joe do you guys have any questions i don't want to monopolize the whole no no you got it you got it what's the question okay so this is not a question but more of a idea okay so they have all these hybrid rules different things on fight pass right oh yeah but like different hybrid rules all right so i got an idea that you can pitch the fight pass okay and oh, i want to make sure it's cool with you because it's kind of like a specific idea for you okay okay would you excuse two questions would you be down for this and then will you take it to fight pass okay. and pitch it okay so you versus junior tafa okay wait hybrid rules match round one jujitsu only okay now I'm also down to add the second Tafa, Justin Tafa, make it a handicap match. So you got to beat both of them in jujitsu in the first round, okay? Or else, or else, which I think if you saw the fight he recently had with Carl Williams, he doesn't really. It doesn't seem like he's even worried about jujitsu. He's like, I- I'm not even. I like my him. odds, yeah. So, so I'm just picking him just to pick on him a little bit, but you know it's, it's all in good fun, uh, Junior and Justin. But so both of them, right? But here's where I'm going to give them an edge if they can survive the jujitsu round two slap fighting they get first slap so it's, it's got to be have stakes, right it's got to have stakes there's got to be of some kind of enforcement of, of of stalling and i would be in because the only problem is i've had guys i had a guy in an mma event it was a grappling match he's a heavyweight he's like 250 so like hey you want to do this i was like sure this is like before i was in the ufc or anything and i would have beaten this guy probably 28 or 30 to like two and he just, there was no submission. He just would not do anything. He was having his hands at his face to where I went double, I can't say the name of the choke because it's not PC anymore, but like two thumbs around his neck just strangling him to go like, okay, I'm not, it's good. They're going to call it a draw because it's submission only. So I got to win in the court of public opinion that I dominated him. What can I do more than grab him like this with both hands for 30 seconds? Um, All right. So okay. there had to be something where like, if they're not trying to defend or get away, then... You know, they get two warnings, and then we'll, we'll give you we'll, we'll 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 give you titty twisters. Titty twisters. Okay, then I'm in. All right, cool. <laughs> <Stop. Okay. laughs> titty twisters are legal. Joe's in. We'll be pitching this to fight pass. I love it because you know, and I don't expect it to make it to the slap fighting portion, but for the audience, there has to be a stake. You know what I mean? Like they have to be like, oh man, like what if Joe has to go to that second round? You know what I mean? And then it's hey, like really beat that. You're never gonna lose. There's always the chance they might, so you keep watching. And then you just gotta take one slap. I mean, from yeah. one of the toughest. You know, <laughs> as long as I'm being compensated, I don't see the problem here at all. Joe, Dana says it's actually safer. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at yeah. the statistics, I ain't no comment. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I, only, uh, so the, I think besides the Justin Toff, a brilliant idea. I mean, other than that, I'm trying to check my notes here. Um, hybrid rules match, second round slap fighting. <laughs> um, oh, um, so, oh, Joe, all this stuff with Sneeko. Sneeko is sparring Sean Strickland. Okay, um, Alex wants to come down to your gym and spar a bunch of pro fighters. Is that can, can, can we, <laughs> that is not true? Hey, open door policy, my friend. <laughs> so we're gonna do a vlog, and like I wanted to get your take on this too. So, did you see like they've been giving these uh, fighters near see the boxing ball and having them like try to see how many times they can hit it, right? Yeah. And every single one of them, the whole question is like, how many times can they hit it, right? So I want to just. Because like none of them can put up more than like ten. I think John Jones hit it like twenty times. Like, and he, and he was like, and he was like the record holder, right? So I just want to get your take on this. Okay, this is a clip. <laughs> is that Joshua Fabia? Who was that? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no, but Josh, I, I, I'm not going to say I didn't learn that from him. I had a deep conversation with Steven Seagal last time I was in Dubai. <laughs> partially him, partially Steven Seagal. It was both. But, I mean, do you see, like, not only am I hitting it right, right? Bro, we got to get you, we got, we have smokers down here all the time. We got to get you a smoker. Ooh, you know, get right, smoking, summer, baby. That's just the motivation I need. This summer, North Carolina, we were going to go to Vegas for UFC uh, International Fight Week. Let's go to North Carolina. Let's go. We'll get a local North Carolina bar. We'll take it over. We'll we'll have a smoker, and then we'll have drinks after. Let's do this. Okay. <laughs> Pencil it in, Alex. There you go. Got it. In crown. Pencil it in in crown. Um, <laughs> okay. So other than that, man, I just want to talk UFC 300 because we got that coming up, and the fight card this weekend. We were just talking about this, where 
they're not exactly sending their best. You know, we had like a couple of lackluster main events in a row. You have, and, and then it gets even worse with the refereeing and the judging and the eye pokes and all the different fiascos that go on with the card. So I we have this theory. March Madness, WrestleMania. The UFC is just going hands off. They're like, you know, we're just going to kind of deal from the bottom of the deck here and then, and then make us all a little bit uh, amped and ready for 300, I think. So we're going to kind of skip to 300 here. There's a lot of more interesting fights. We don't want to waste Joe's time talking about Talking about Norma Dumont versus Jerain Jerain Demander Ray. Good fight. I'm excited for it. <laughs> I have taken a lot of notes on that fight. I could have given you, but yeah, I think it's probably best that we. Yeah, yeah I mean, you got a you got a four. Well, what about fight, Joe's upcoming fight? Years, you know, I mean, and so well, what would you say? Let's talk about Joe's upcoming fight. I mean, I'm sitting here. We've been we were playing matchmaker for you and Grand Dawson for quite some time now. We've been trying to match yeah. you guys up since yeah. you both started in the UFC. I mean, we thought this was the matchup that would get you guys into the top ten. I'm excited for this one um not you guys joe and <laughs> you know what's interesting is that like this they're doing it at lower weight classes what we were trying to do at joe's weight class which is to get these young up-and-coming like studs that are at the that are younger and you know haven't gotten to fight the upper echelon of the olivares the poriers the stars of the divisions get them against each other and just let's go like stop and then they're doing it with uh what, what was the fight that just happened you had uh the kid that trains with driscus Two plusies. Uh, oh, Simon. 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 Simon, Cameron, Mark, yeah. Simon yes. It's Cameron yeah. Simon versus uh, Peyton Talbot. Peyton Talbot. Exactly. And in and, and Peyton Talbot, yeah. they fought him against Ra- Raul Rosas. Like, they got all these young up-and-comers against each other. I'm so glad we're seeing it now. And the funniest part about this is, last time you were on the show, we talked about KGB versus Bobby Green. And at first, you know, you're giving you're giving Grant his flowers. You're like, yeah, Grant this, Grant that. And then you go, wait, this is five rounds? Bobby Green. So <laughs> that's my main question is, does Grant know that Joe picked against him in the Bobby Green and predicted it correctly? It's strictly objective, you know. Uh, but honestly, I, was, I guess I was wrong. I thought it was going to be a gas tank issue just because he's so grappling heavy, and that was the first 30 seconds, you know. Um, right. Which is weird. It's not the same as my last fight, of course, but I feel like, uh, for me at least, I mean, maybe not for him because he is fighting backward in the rankings a bit. Um, I feel like it's the UFC being like, yeah, like crazy stuff happens. Let's just match up again. You know, mm-hmm. especially in my situation. Like, I'm not being penalized for what happened in my fight at all. It's just a crazy thing, right? Uh, obviously, I have my own opinion on it on what I should have done differently and I take full ownership of it. But it's also one of those things where you go just crazy variables. I think it's kind of the same for him. Like I don't feel like we're in this crazy losers bracket. Whereas the last time I lost in the UFC a couple of years ago, you know, I got pushed to a guy that, you know, had one win in the UFC. It's like, okay, this could be like a, you know, a preliminary losers bracket or a loser leaves town match. You know, this feels much more like a prospect fight still where you're going, Oh, there's still great things in the horizon for, for both these guys. Let's see who's moving on first. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's also like you guys are both. Uh, I, I think what the what you could, what I would take away from it, if I were you, is that every fight that you have that's against another guy who is who is uh, a somebody, whether like a name guy like Grant Dawson, who's coming off a loss, doesn't really matter. It's like people know who Grant Dawson is. You know what I mean? It's uh, clear that the UFC has the best intentions for both of you. You know, I mean, as best of intentions as the UFC can have for any individual person. You know, well, they're I mean? giving them both the opportunity, and that's exactly. all they can do. The, the, I, they're giving them a, a, the, both the opportunity to fight in front of a crowd and to get back on a winning streak. And that's home you know, state. Yeah, I, I love Grant Dawson. I love Joe Selecki, and you know, it sucks that they have to fight each other, but it's also great. We've been calling for it this whole time, and uh, it, it, we've had him in our crosshairs for a while, and we finally got him. Yeah, and the thing is, is like, uh, I always say that, like, I've never had a fight that I looked at and was like, oh, man, like, that's throwing me to the wolves. Like, every fight in this division is getting thrown to the wolves because everybody's super tough. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I've been mad, like you just said, like, I've been match made so fair, you know, like, um, I don't know if it's because I'm just doing my job. I show up, I say yes to everything, or they see the potential or what it is. But uh, every fight I've had, I'm like, yeah, super tough fight, super winnable fight. You know, like, uh, there's never been one where you're like, I feel like they want me to lose, you know. I think it's it's brand, you know. I think it's because you walk in and they think they're, that you're Ilya Tapuri every time. <laughs> like we got to deal this guy. Some somebody good. There you go. I'll take that all day long. It's a, it's a handsome son of a gun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, Ilya, and uh, also Ilya Tapuri. Uh, I mean, how about that fight against Volkanovski? Like, and, and I think uh, who who do you get? Got Ilya Tapuri versus Sugar Sean Amount. Because he's calling for that fight as if it's like an easier fight than Marab. I feel like it's a harder fight than Marab. I think it's a harder fight than Marab. I think Marab, you got 25 minutes to catch Marab leaping in, and he leaps in a lot with his chin up. Uh, 
and and there's there's more room for error than there is with Aljo, right? With Aljo, he, been, what? Sorry, I meant to say the tape's been uh, the tape is there on Marab. He's been rocked yeah. in the Suhudo fight. He's been rocked in uh, I think the Marlon yeah. Rice fight. Uh, he, like, a lot of fights. <laughs> and here's the thing: if he takes you down, what's he trying to do? Not even really strike. He's going to cut you and take you down again, right? So you know he had, he had a fight with Jan where we're shoot shooting like 45 times. You have 45 chances to time that counter right hand going backwards, um, with very little chance of being submitted. With Aljamain, the margin for error is so small. If he gets you down, there's a chance of getting strangled. So I think uh, it's an easier fight than Aljamain was. And I, in that regard, I think it's an easier fight than uh, Taporia for sure. I think Taporia could get hit coming in because he's aggressive. But look how patient he was with Volk. I think uh, he covers distance well. He's very good on the ground. It's a fun fight, but I if I'm O'Malley, I'm trying to keep the belt the longest. I think you get that title defense against Rob first. Yeah, so I'm looking at your card right now, UFC 302. Always good to be on a number card. Uh, always, or no, is it 302? Yeah, 302. Yeah, first time. And, uh, yeah, oh, sorry, I, I swiped to the wrong one. Um, and, but you got you got a lot of good uh, fights already on this card. It's not completely filled out yet. It says the main event right now, Roman Dolodese versus Hernandez. But it's not the main event. <laughs> it's not going to be the main event. But, I mean, for that, that could be an event, a fight night card for sure. For that's, sure. That's, that's, Hernandez is a hard. dog, man. I love watching him fight. Yeah. You got the return of Mickey Gall. And I got a question. Do you know Basil Hafez? Uh, just in passing. Like, we've been in the same room a bunch of times through Balance Studios. But I don't think we've ever had, like, a conversation, you know. Uh, I was probably already down south by the time he was really there a lot. Because, um, I mean, shoot, that was – I was at Balance Studios on the weekends, like, 2010, 2011, 2012. So that's, like, 12 years ago. I don't even know if he was training, honestly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so well, that's interesting. Yeah, he's, he's on that card. I was too. going by then, but um, always in the same circles and hearing you know how great he was. And then look at that fight with uh, Del Madalena, that was awesome. Yeah, I mean, it was so close. Alex thought he won that fight. Um, so yeah, we like definitely expect big things from him coming in against Mickey Gall. Is this Mickey's first fight back? Uh, so. long time, man, that's a lot of pressure. Uh, coming in, first fight back in a long time, hometown, Newark. I mean, that's a lot of pressure. Um, Two years, yeah. He hasn't fought in two years. And against a guy like Basil Fez, I mean, that's, that's also crazy. kind of a home match. Yeah. <laughs> as close as you're gonna get him everywhere Gaul is good, Basil's better. Oh yeah, definitely. Way best. All right. Well, let's see if we can get a couple of takes from Joe on the UFC three hundred main card while we still have time. Um, Joe, also before we get into this, anything you got going on, anything coming up, all in grappling, you got anything you want to pitch plug man, or talk, just, talk the, right? just the fight, man. The fight is, is the main thing, you know. Um, just super excited. But other than that, yeah, we had it all in grappling March 9th. It was awesome, had a good turnout. First one in this area, you know, we had him in Wilmington. Now we're in Charlotte. Um, doing another one this summer. It's either gonna be June 22nd or July 13th. The venue's available for both. I'm just kind of gonna make sure there's no other competitions going on that day and see what works best for some of the competitors. And uh, we'll have another one here soon, which is pretty cool. And then today, uh, I don't know that it's actually going to happen, but uh, who cares? No one's going to hold me to it. But I might be doing some kind of documentary type thing um, I was contacted about. And I have a call tomorrow about it, which is something I very hesitantly – I don't put a lot of content out there um, like that. Uh, it's something I, I hesitate about. But at the same time, I've had a lot of thoughts about how my kids are little right now, and they don't get to see a lot of what I do. I mean they're around for everything, but they're – you know, my son's eight months. My daughter's three. She'll forget all this. Um, and I was like, oh, this is a chance to actually capture it. So somebody actually contacted me about doing like a full-length documentary. Um, I don't know what it all entails. I don't know if it's going to happen. But uh, it sounded promising, and it, and it seemed like a guy with good intentions. So we're going to have a conference call tomorrow. And uh, they may document the camp and the fight even, which is something I – it's out of my comfort zone. But uh, something that might be pretty cool coming down the pipeline. Dude, that's, that's awesome. amazing. And it's like having home movies for your kids professionally done. You know what I mean? That's exactly it. If no one watches it, uh, you know, they'll have it. You know, God forbid something happens to me, they'll get to watch. Like, here's the thing. Like, I watched the Jason Kelsey doc, right? Uh, and I feel like I know that guy. I've never met that guy, you know? So, God forbid something happens to me, my kids only get to hear stories about me. When now you can watch, you feel like, you know, you knew your dad. Or, or maybe, you know, they only know me as uh, teaching jiu-jitsu one day. And you're like, you know, I used to do some pretty cool stuff. So, it's cool to have. So, uh, there's always a chance we get that going. And, uh so, other than that, it's just the fight, man. The fight's the only thing. And and here at GMO, of course. I'm teaching uh, every night and uh, coaching and helping the gym and uh, loving every minute of it. Awesome. Well, if that materializes, uh, everyone out there, make sure you catch a watch. I know us three will. And uh, look out for uh, June and July for you know possible jujitsu tournaments here. So all good stuff. That's awesome. All right. Well, let's take everybody through at least a little bit of this main card of UFC 300. Uh, while Joe's here, 
Um, I'm going to start from the bottom because I'm actually more interested in Joe's take on the first two fights for the main card yeah. since one of them is in his weight class. Uh, so let's go through first Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage. Um, interested to hear Joe's thoughts on Bo Nickel. Kind of comes from our, uh, well, not really from our area, but I mean, he went to Penn State. So it's kind of, you know, always has that little uh, bit of, I mean, Penn State, let's get, I mean, what they did at the NCAA tournament. Oh, can I talk about this a little bit? Oh, you know? I thought you were going somewhere no, completely I'm... different. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was so long ago. <laughs> Joe Panu. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Penn State, you know, Kale Sanderson, Alex. Take them through yeah, the highlights. Yeah, they've won like 12 of the last 14 national titles. It's insane. Yeah, and they beat they were they they won. I think you what was it? You'd have to add up like the next two teams, like every other team in the top. Yeah, they won on like Friday before that there was even a championship match being being held. They they had already won the first second day of the tournament. They, like they're insane. They and I, I say that everyone on the team was an all American. I say that to say Bo Nickel is still at State College on a regular basis with these guys. Um, you know, we don't need to spend a ton of time talking about the ins and outs of how Bo Nickel is going to win against Cody Brundage, but just wanted to kind of future scout of, you know, I mean, Bo Nickel is a minus 1,200 or something favorite at this point, right? Minus 2,000. Uh, he might be the biggest favorite. I, I think the reason they put him, everybody's wondering, why is Bo Nickel on this main card? Why is Bo Nickel on UFC 300 against Cody Brundage? All of the fights are fights that could have main evented or, uh, and except this one, it seems for some people, right? I mean, I, I obviously have a lot of respect for Bo Nickel, but I think the reason is the UFC wants to have the fight with the biggest line discrepancy ever. Um, and I think by the time the popularity of this card and fight gets there, Bo is sitting at a minus, doesn't say it on uh, topology, but he's like minus 2,600. Minus 2,600. So mine, it will, it'll be a minus 3,000 favorite probably by the time the fight starts, maybe more. And that will be, I think, the biggest underdog and the biggest favorite in UFC history. So. I think that's crazy. I don't think anybody should ever be. If you have two fists and four ounce gloves and elbows and knees, no one should ever, 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 ever be that big of a favorite. But I see why everyone would pick him, and I'd pick him too. Um, the sky's the limit. I think the other reason they might have him on there is because he's obviously he's obviously a hit. People are following his career from wrestling, coming over to watch. But also now you get to get the casuals, right? Like you put them on that paper for you. You know everybody's tuning in for all the other big names. And now you got a chance to build your guy – you know, they don't need to build Jim Miller. They don't need to build Bobby Green. They're old. You know, uh, they're great. They have, but they're, they are what they're going to be. You know, they're not going to come out of anywhere and go from being them to being Connor in the next couple of years. This guy could be, he's so young, he's so popular, and he's, he's, you know, he's winning. So I feel like they're also trying to build him and be like, man, like this is a guy, he could be the next face of the company, you know. And uh, honestly, I think uh, that's the guy. To, it would be nice if we could get guys like that. That's trending the right direction. You know, he can be a little smug, a little arrogant. He's great. You guys that are great like that, he's, he's never not been great at wrestling or anything. So, he, you know, he could come out as a cocky a little bit, but I think uh, he has that Penn State value system, like carries himself well. Like that'd be a good guy to build. It'd be nice to go from the, you know, the bootleg McGregor era where like McGregor was here, it was awesome. Then we got the copycats, not so awesome, to get into like, hey man, like we're a legit sport. Look at these guys, you know. Or return better. to the GSP era. Yes, yes, exactly. And I think I that's exactly see, yeah. he's that. He's almost think, in the mix of GSP and Khabib, like in his terms of his quiet confidence in the way that Khabib has, where he's just telling you, like, matter of factly, like, this is like what it is. Um, Alex, you were going to say something. I think the fast success of Bo Nickel and putting him in, in this situation is just going to do great for guys that are there at Penn State in, in these in these wrestling rooms that are seeing another way around this without having to, you know, like the one guy in the country who does the Olympics for every single weight class. And there's only 10 weight classes. It's a lot harder to have that type of lifestyle than it is to train to become a UFC fighter rather than like being the only one guy who makes money in the country off of wrestling, <laughs> like wrestling. There's, there's no real, ending for it unless you would go to the olympics like we're a national title in college that's where a lot of their like a lot of the guys who win national titles don't win olympics or world titles or anything like that so i think that it's it's good to like show showcase somebody like him so those guys that just won last week two weeks ago they see that and they're like okay well now there's my path dc and shale left Bo off when he said that they're putting me there because I'm going to generate buys. DC and Shale on their show laughed at that, but I'm surprised that they did because they're both wrestling guys and think about it. 
Penn State has one of the largest alumni communities in the world. And with coming hot off the heels of, uh, you know, March Madness, if you will, um, you're going to the NCAA tournament and Penn State's success. Think about the type of person who's at home on a Saturday night and sees that Bo Nickel is on UFC 300, the biggest yep. UFC card that they're going to hear about, right? They're the exact. They're not the type of person who's going to go illegally stream it. They're not some 16-year-old kid. They are the type of person who's going to press buy and furthermore probably doesn't have the SD plus yet and will buy it. You know what I mean? So I'm saying that uh, even if you get twenty to 50,000 of those Penn State alumni former wrestlers who have kids that wrestle and watch the tournament, that's still like a lot of money, and it's 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 a, it's scraping the corners of a market that you've already otherwise covered, right? I think people take for granted that guys in other combat sports already watch the UFC. Like jiu-jitsu used to be like this. Everyone did jiu-jitsu because it was very few people did jiu-jitsu back then. We're watching the UFC, but now, dude, no one that likes jiu-jitsu like that loves sports jiu-jitsu. Very rarely do they watch the UFC. If you took Gordon Ryan and put him in a UFC fight, he'd get annihilated. But uh, that's not the <laughs> They're all going to tune in. You know, it's the same thing with wrestling. If you think if people are into combat sports, oh, they're already watching. But I think it's exactly that. Like, dude, how many 10-year-old kids in scholastic wrestling love Bo Nickel and are going to go home and ask their parents to watch the paper? And now you're getting people that would never watch fights. You know, like you said, even if it's a 40000 bot, that's a lot of money, man. That's a lot yeah. of money. And and now it builds him for the guys that – the just lead guys are now watching and they love wrestling when it looks like that. And he's picking you up and dropping on your head. So mm-hmm. it's win-win. Well, it would be win-win if Cody Brundage wasn't going to go in there and shock the world and and get the win, get the jump over Bo Nickel, like I'm going to predict. But that, that's just me. I mean, let, let's see how it plays out. But I think uh, we're vastly overestim- or underestimating uh, Cody Brundage here. So we'll see how hey, it plays out. I mean, look at him again in the Malcoon fight. I mean, maybe he just goes out there and like Bruno Silva just kind of leans into a couple eye pokes and then he's walking out of there with another bag. <laughs> Anything can happen, baby. The, the odds of disqualification. I mean, John Jones got disqualified. Bo Nickel can't get disqualified. Like, it happens. You know what I mean? The odds of disqualification are better than plus uh, than minus 3,000. You know? So it's like crazy. All right. Well, let's move on to a better fight. Uh, we'll talk more in depth about that one and see what Dan's thinking when the fight gets closer. If he's still side of the front, which I think that was a troll job. But you know, we got Justin Gaethje, Max Holloway. That's in your weight class. You know, honestly, I think Justin Gaethje is probably got, what, two or three more fights left in his career before he kind of hangs it up. Odds of you kind of running into to either of these two guys, I think, uh, eh, not impossible. But 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 not like two guys this. that maybe you have had your sights on as people you might have to fight in the next two to three fights. So, objectively, when you look at this, I, I've had two opinions about it, but I'm eager to hear yours. I think, uh, you know, technique for technique, I think Gaethje is just as good as Holloway. You know, obviously, it's a different style, right? Holloway fights longer, volume. Um, I just think the power, man. I don't think I don't think Max has that one-shot KO power it's going to take to stop a guy like Gaethje. Uh, that's what Poirier needed. That's what uh, Eddie Alvarez needed, right? He didn't even have the power. He had to use the knee. But I don't think he can take the damage that high. I, I know he's put the weight on, and I know he's not a small 145-er or 155-er. But uh, I just don't think he can take the power. And I think in a boxing match, it would be close, you know? So now you're going, okay, technique for technique, they can, they can hit with each other. What's the difference maker power? Uh, and those low kicks. Gosh, I can't imagine he can take many of those low kicks, you know? So uh, I got to go with Gaethje. I, I, can't, I can't wait to watch it, but I don't think it's that intriguing of a matchup. Like, I, I could be totally wrong, but I just think it's a runaway for Gaethje. So that's what I thought, too. I, I, when I first saw this, I was like, this sucks because Max Holloway is – uh, the type of fighter who can take a lot of hits and actually has the record for the most strikes absorbed in the UFC. Uh, with And that record gets added to where most strikes absorbed without getting knocked down. But when, when you hear that, it, it doesn't really breathe confidence into you where it's like, oh, like, so we'll never get knocked down. It's kind of like, well, no, every time you take another one of those strikes, it's exponentially more likely that it's going to happen. So, uh, that was my thought too. It was like going to be like, man, this is going to be like Gaethje versus Tony Ferguson all over again, where it's just a clobbering beatdown of bludgeoning punches from Gaethje while, while he eats the shots that are kind of a uh, more kind of voluminous and less power and just walks right through. And like you said, leg kicks and has the option for takedowns. I was so sold on that. And then as it got closer and as I saw Max's fire get ignited and how he's getting pissed off that people are writing him off and he's getting pissed off that Joe Rogan said, uh, it's a bad fight for Max. This is the type of shit that Ma- that gets Max up. This is the type of shit that, and so the intangible factor of this, what I like about it, I like the age. I like that Max isn't 35 yet. We know that 35 
for the lower divisions, Volkanovsky, that was the big tail going into his fight with Teporia, was that fighters who are 35 years old, old in the 145-pound division, they lose, you know, at like a 70% rate, right? And now you have Holloway, uh, who's going to have that advantage a little bit here in a weight class only 10 pounds greater. Um, Gaethje's not a big 155 They're going to be the same height, same reach. People consider Gaethje to be that stronger guy, but I think how that's going to manifest in the fight is stiffness. I think it's going to manifest in slowness and stiffness. And I think Holloway, being the best boxer that we have in these lighter weight divisions, is going to be slipping, moving, dotting them up, dancing around them. And I think Holloway cruises to a decision or maybe even a finish, guys, because you got to think about those old Justin Gaethje fights when he was up against the ropes, just getting knocked around by some of these guys, and the ref comes in and stops it, and Max can put a voluminous pace. I'm not saying Justin's not going to still be there, but he's got nasal issues, and he, I don't think that he can run with Max for five rounds. I don't – Justin, if you ever hear him talk, he's not breathing out of his nose. He's got to get that Driska surgery, you know what I mean, to go five with a guy who can put it up against him. Like, Ferguson was not still in that fight, so he was cruising. Yeah. But when he, if you're talking about a Max Holloway, he's got some of the best cardio and the most volume and is going to put up 300 strikes before the fourth round, I think that Max could really start putting them on him like we saw him do with Cater in the later rounds, maybe even get a standing TKO of some sort. Or I, 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 it's almost like I saw it in a dream. I think Max Holloway wins. I'm switching my pick. Max Holloway, um, volume, di volume, determination, being Hawaiian and not respecting leg kicks. He's not going to give a fuck about those. Like, he must well have one of the Diaz brothers in there. You get Max Holloway in there. I mean, he's like little baby leg kicks. Like, there's nothing. He's also not going to get taken down because he surfs. He knows the ocean balance. That's going to prevent him from getting taken down. He's going to summon DJ Penn. He's going to he's going to be hopping on one leg. And Gage, he's not even going to go for a takedown. He's he's too uh, death before dishonor to to, to do that. <laughs> you know. But anyway, that's my take. Dan, Alex. Alex, Max is your boy. What do you got? Max Holloway all the way. Send it, Jerome. Max Holloway is going to get it done in this one. I totally feel that Justin Gaethje will have more power, but I don't think that he's going to be able to hit Max. Max has put on a lot of weight. He's looking jacked up now. Um, I think Max Holloway wins this fight, and I think he wins it by corner retirement Ooh. fourth round going into the fifth yeah i would i would like max this is odd i would like max in the three round fight which is kind of odd to say because max is normally known as like the marathon runner here but based on the leg kicks i think that you know both justin will be there and max will be there it's gonna go to those fourth and fifth rounds i think the leg kicks will add up and i honestly don't like the fact that max is you know, adding on that weight and, you know, adding on the muscle, I think that's going to stiffen, stiffen him up to uh, the, the pace that Justin Gaethje will put on. So I like Justin Gaethje here. It's going to be a close fight, but I think the power shots, like Joe said, are going to go to Justin. I think the judge is going to look at that. Um, maybe there will be a little bit more volume for Max, but not, not too, too much more that's really going to put him over the top here. And again, I think those leg kicks are going to pay dividends in round four and five. So give me Justin. Let's call this 2-2. Two, two, call it even. I'm the leg kicks are terrifying with Max's little chicken legs. I, yeah. I will say that. Seriously. Yeah. Sur Bro, he's a surfer. He, he does not care about <laughs> leg kicks. Listen, one thing I'll say. I just had a vision in my head. It's the fifth round about to start. And Max is pointing at the ground. And he's going like, oh, let's go, let's go. And Justin Gaethje, he, he's, he's rising to the challenge. But he's looking a little discouraged, and he's got blood coming out of his nose. That's all. That's what I saw. It came to me. It just came to me right now. I'm just gonna let everybody know what I saw because like, it's already happened. Oh, that's your takeaway. All right, let's move on. Uh, Joe, it's. It, I promise I'd get you out of here on time. Thank you so much for joining the show. Uh, as always, anything else you gotta you gotta tell these people, Alex, Dan, anything you want to say to Joe before we get going? Joe, you're the man. We're rooting for you. Looking for that documentary. If it happens, if not, all good. And uh, check out for the uh, jujitsu. <laughs> Uh, competitions in June or July. Dan, you're competing against Alex in the competition in June or and July. And check <laughs> us out. Check us out. Again, June or July, whenever it happens, we'll be there. Possibly, possibly. We'll, we'll cool. right. I don't know if Alex is going to sign, but, you know. Uh, I'm, I already signed, sealed, and delivered. Joe, um, I, I don't know if Luke told you, but you are the fourth time uh, Triple P certified fighter of the year. <laughs> That's um, correct. You win. Despite, at, oh, on December second, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually gave it to you after that. If it makes wow. you feel anything. Okay. Wow. Dang. Because Joe, the fight doesn't begin when uh, 
when, when, when you are facing success, it begins when you face adversity. And now you yeah, face bro. adversity, and here you go. And uh, what, what do you have in front of you but Bright Horizons with an even better opportunity in Grand Theft <laughs> Yeah, man. Thank you guys for having me on. Always a blast. Uh, yeah, just check out what you guys shouted out. Thank you. All in grappling. Uh, or Jimmo, Slaky BJJ, kind of one my this is a program at the gym here. Um, it's growing, doing awesome. All my students are doing great. They're really fun watching them grow. And uh, just a huge shout out to Jeff Jimmo. If you guys, go, I don't know if you watched uh, Anakin Florian podcast, but the coolest thing is Longo, you know, uh, Jeff was up there with Weidman all week. And Longo came on and they're like, oh man, like Chris looks so different, this and that. Like, what did you have him do? And he, he did the coolest thing I've ever seen a coach do. And he was like, oh, I had nothing to do with this camp. Like, I'm Chris's guy. I'll always be Chris's guy. I came up and cornered him because I love him. But he's like, dude, I got to shout out Jeff Jimmo. He went on a three-minute rant about how awesome Jeff Jimmo is. It's the first time, aside from us fighters doing it, I've seen somebody who didn't know who he was witness what he does. You know, um, So just a huge shout out to Jeff and uh, everybody here at the gym for helping me get ready for this fight. And uh, my family, as always, man. Thank you guys for having me on. Of course. Thanks for being here. Thank, Thank you, Joe. All right. Take care, guys. Talk to you later. Have a good one. All right, so we learned that Luke wasn't man enough to uh, let Joe know that he's opposed to Longo Weidman Jim, and uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes, I've made, mis- I've made mistakes. I, all I can do now is apologize and move on. I don't know what. I, oh, oh, guys, oh, oh, okay. Can I? Can I just? Yeah, all I can say is I've made mistakes. <laughs> I did forget that he knew Chris Weidman and was connected to him. I thought Chris Weidman was in South Carolina. <laughs> he was. He is. I... I forgot that they were fucking friends. Man, you should have let him know that. You know, Chris, is Chris is just a workout guy, right? He just works out. Why did you say that? Why? I mean, you should have let him know that Chris is just a workout guy. If, dude, thank God Joe doesn't watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> if he saw three episodes ago where I was saying that Chris is three. responsible to his wife and family <laughs> and that this is equivalent. This is one episode ago. I was like, this is equivalent. I, was, I said it was equivalent of him throwing himself a super sweet 16 to continue yeah. fighting. And I, and, and I completely forgot that they even, that their paths crossed at all. Uh, well, if you would look at Instagram, I saw that Joe liked the video of Weidman getting the win. So I was like, oh, man. Luke's not gonna like. Uh, I wouldn't have even brought it up. I wouldn't have even fucking brought it up. I just. I thought that's why you brought it up. I thought. I thought that's why you brought. Yeah, it I thought you're gonna. I thought you're gonna thought you, up and be like, "Hey, Joe, we I differ on this opinion. Let me present my." I point. thought you were gonna. Even when I was in. differing, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I was like, I, I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, no, no, no. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, then it kind of started hitting me. I'm like, Joe's probably defending Chris Simon because he knows him, and uh, just like jail. Just yeah, he essentially said, I stayed up to watch just for the Weidman fight. Yeah. <laughs> Look, when I'm locked in, I'm in the zone, I got the bright light on me. I'm just trying to, like, host the show. I'm trying to make sure I can, like, play clips and pull up information. And look I hosted clips. the whole last show. I set the table. You always complain about always having to set the table. I hosted the last show. I what set the table. What a fucking disaster. Oh, <laughs> I'm fighting for my life. Um... <laughs> Look, I disagree. I don't like D- Dustin Poirier either, and Joe loves him. And I'm oh, sure he loves him. Yeah, I'm sure he loves Stephen Waterboy. I'm sure he loves rock. To, to be honest, me and Joe, we have just different tastes. It's like different tastes in music. I'm a little bit country. He's a little bit rock and roll. You know what I mean? No, you're you're more like Maria Agapova, and he's more like Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. He's <laughs> just like a nice guy. That is and, so true. That and is you're the just true like state of being a crazy person. <laughs> I'm not devil worshiping. I was in church on goddamn Easter Sunday. I'm not devil worshiping. All right. Yeah. And, <laughs> but listen, all that matters is we all love Joe. We all love Joe. That's all that matters. What'd you say? Uh, we all love Joe. That's all that matters. And what I wanted to say, what I wanted to say, but I'm I, again, I just get, I, I get with all four of us. I'm always like. I'm like trying to like wait for other people's turns to talk and stuff. And I, I uh, forget to say stuff and I also get nervous and stuff, but I was going to say, Joe, it hurt to see you lose, but I just didn't want to get negative. Nah, nah, nah. I meant it in a positive way. I was trying to, I was going to be like, uh, but I was like, that's not, I was like, I know when I saw position over submission on your agenda. Okay, I'm yeah. Like, I was like, wait, don't that bring that up. That, <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> I mean, I was yeah, you're right. Okay. So for those who didn't know, should I even say it? Like, I, it's well, so negative. Right? Don't. Okay. All right. I, I, I was nice. I was very nice. I was nice there by even 
Yeah. What? By even not just alluding to it and saying, hey, hey, do you want do you want do you I love want the to balls on my mouth? Don't, don't be <laughs> I've had a I've had a rough day. All right. No. But okay. no, um but listen, it's the elephant in the room. I mean, like there was a UFC card that happened on Saturday. There was I folks, they happened. Like I I forgot that they were like boys. I wouldn't have fucking put them in that position. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna text him and say I forgot you and Weidman are boys. I should I don't would. text him. Don't text him. <laughs> don't text him. <laughs> Any okay, okay. Um <laughs> so where do we go from here? I we, we have to just keep going. So, 300. Well, Max we skipped Holloway. we skipped Max Albert Holloway. versus Sarikian. Uh no, 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 no. Oh, you want to go? I did Sorry. skip over Oliveira versus Sarukian. Another fight in Joe's weight class, and that would have been a much more interesting breakdown because fucking he probably will fight one of them more likely than Max or Justin. So mm. drop the ball. It's all even between those right. four. Guys, I need to reset. I'm gonna go pour a, a glass of wine and just take a little reset, take a bathroom break, take everybody through um uh we're like we're so out of order. We started in the middle of the main card. No, 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 no. We're good. We're good. We started. Right. Hey, the everybody, the main welcome to part of Wiley Pursuit. We're breaking down UFC 300. Watch your backs. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Watch your backs. That's a very good slogan for the show. Watch your back. <laughs> Watch your back. We're we're coming. Um, Charles Oliveira versus Arman Sarukian. Charles Oliveira. It's good. <laughs> Arman Sarukian's good too. Dan, what do you think about this one? Oh man, um, I gotta go with Armin Sarukian here. I don't see this guy getting submitted in any way, shape, or form. I think he I mean he is he's the next generation, man. And he's he's been the next generation for a while. He took Islam to one of his more uh you know tougher decisions. Um, and deservedly so. And that's when he was a young man. I mean, he must have been 21, 22 at the time. Now he's really coming into his own. Um, the wrestling is there. Um, I don't know, man. I just feel like Oliveira, he's had his time. Um, he's been in the UFC for, gosh, I mean, long enough to be putting up submission records and, 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 uh, and finishing records here. But at the end of the day, I, I just think Armin has, uh, the youth advantage and just positionally, uh, you know, position over submission, right? We got the, the wrestler don't see him getting submitted whatsoever. I think the striking is pretty even, but again, with the, the youth and the athleticism, and I think the hardiness is really going to come into play in here. Like no one's putting arm in Sarukin in really tough positions here. I think Charles, he, he's, he can be chinny at times, right? So uh, the math to me is adding up to Armin Sarukian. Um, I think he's at like minus 250, something like that. And I think that's justified. So give me Armin Sarukian. Yes. This is a three-round affair, is it? Yes. I wish I wish every fight on this Every fight on three, 300. Five, rounds. five rounds. Like if I'm being honest, like they could all be five rounds. This is what I'm talking about, Dan. The discrepancy in card, like – if we had one of these fights on a good card or, or on one of these bad cards last week, we probably wouldn't have complained, like a, a Yuri Prohashka fight or something of that nature. You know what I mean? But regardless, you know, I'm happy that this card's loaded more than I am, you know, whatever. I'm, I, not, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not done my union break, Armand Sarukin by knock. Okay. I was actually going to take Armand Sarukin by submission. Um, I, think, I think Armand Sarukian is going to submit him. He's going to put on a lot of, of a lot of pressure on Dubronx, and Dubronx is going to fold. It's so funny. Everybody was always like Paul Felder, the last guy to beat to beat Charles Oliveira. It's like no, that's just the day that <laughs> Charles Oliveira looked himself in the mirror and was like, "I let fucking Paul Felder beat me. What am I doing with my life?" And changed everything. He was just like. If I let a guy as bad as Paul Felder whoop my ass, I got to rethink that everything. I got to reinvent the whole entire wheel. Um, Charles Alvarez, he's probably going to get like arm triangled or maybe even Kimura. Maybe even Kimura. Third, late second. Early third, late second. Kimura. So you're you're putting out the specific submission. I, I, think, he's, I think it's probably going to end up being an arm triangle. But it could get turned into a key lock, Kimura, you know – type of situation uh an americana a straight kimura something of that nature but um okay. 
I, I think that uh, I think Armand Sarukian wins this by submission. Charles Oliveira finds the way out. I, he, I know what you're saying, but he's not going to get the opportunity to let him submit him because he's going to just steamroll him like he did Benil Darius. Sarukian's at next level now. He's getting better and better, and that's scary. He was already Why do you look like you're in pain? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. You, you could just wait down to the talk. wrong hole. You could just wait. To talk. No one's, no one's really on the edge of your, their seat to hear you explain further why you, you think Armand Sarukia knocks him out. Um, just catch your breath. Come back. We'll, we'll come <laughs> back to it. We'll, we'll put. A, I feel like in national no lady ballsy bear. We'll put a bookmark on that. Let's go to Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage. We kind of brushed on it earlier. I'm going with Bo Nickel. I think he's going to destroy Cody Brundage. Cody Brundage sucks. No. Um, but if I was going to bet on anything here, I would more than likely bet on Brundage. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm betting on Bo Nickel. Obviously, 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 dog or pass situation. Uh, we have a guy who is a wrestler. Let's not forget. And by the way, this is not a wrestling mat. We are not in Happy Valley. Uh, this is a UFC octagon cage uh, where we have a guy who has more UFC experience, who has wrestling credentials and knockout power. So I'm not saying that Cody Brunson is going to win, uh, but at plus a million, I think Cody Brunson is a good play, at least as a singular bet to pretty much, you know, cap off all of your losses and buy your UFC pay-per-view if you put down like $5. So how am I going to say Bo Nickel for a pick? Is he probably going to win? Okay, yeah, folks. I'll give you Bo Nickel as the official pick, but will I have any singular parlay, however you want to put it? No, no, not doing Bo Nickel on this. Sorry. I've always in my head had this I like this feeling of collecting when I make a bet slip, right? Like almost like, when when it wins, it's like it's like Bitcoin. It's like a blockchain. It's like ledgered. It's 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 like time stamped. It's like proof. You know, history. It's like you know, it's there forever. Um, so the only reason I would put Bo Nickel on my bet slip is because I do believe he's going to win, and I would just want like to be able to say I hit the perfect parlay. I wouldn't want to say the perfect parlay. Well, you know, I left Bo Nickel off because he was sure. well, I wasn't really added anything to my perfect parlay. No, no, no. That's not what the perfect play is about. What do I say at the beginning of every show? It doesn't matter what the odds are. It matters what's going to happen. Sure. You can, you can be completely indifferent about the odds if you are if you're just going to hit a perfect parlay. Like, it, oh, oh, I bet ten to win eleven hundred. Oh, I bet ten to win eleven thousand. Oh, I bet ten to win one hundred thousand. Guess what? In each of those situations, you're a happy fucking man. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're a really happy, happy guy. So, I'm I'm chasing perfect parlays. And it's not complete without Bo Nickel on the bet slip. You know what I mean? All the chi- all the hens got to come home to roost. All the chickens got to come home to roost. Yes, sir. We used to look at that as a free space instead of looking at it like negative value. It's like we used to look at it as like, no, just a free space. Free space. Well, no, that's why you take Bo Nickel and then you just bet a side bet on Cody Brundage just in case. You oh, put yeah, yeah. Bo Nickel in your perfect parlay. For sure. And then when that fight comes, you just... Yeah. You, do, you dollar cost average, not financial advice. All right, Wei Li Zhang, Yao Jinan, Nan Yan. I, oh, for one, after last week, I forgot to say something about the whole Aaron Blanchfield situation. I'm out on women's sports in totality, except for basketball. Yes. Um, that was, um, did you see the LinkedIn thing I sent you of that woman posting on LinkedIn? No, I didn't, but I am so sick of the ladies MMA fighters. They're not good. The only woman I can depend on on earth, not even my own mother, Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark is the only woman on earth that I can leave $100 with, and she'll hang on to it. She'll bring it all the way to the title, and I was winning this year. I don't give a shit what anybody heard. That $100 bet at the beginning of March Madness on Iowa to win it all, to win 600, is going to come to fruition. Luckily, Luke, I won all of my UFC money back this weekend on NC State, taking on Duke. Fuck Duke, let's go. March Madness has been good to me, boys. Those are the only two bets I placed. Hey, the devil is never going to win on Easter Sunday. Let's say that. So that was that was the <laughs> obvious. I don't even follow March Madness, and yet I still peripherally have heard people making fun of people for including Duke in their bracket at all. 
for the last decade of my life. Uh, my okay, wife has been winning the entire thing in her bracket. Luke, Shame. you did Shame. you didn't major in bracketology? <laughs> I, I, I can say this quite honestly. I have never in my 30 years of life filled out a bracket. You have a better chance of hitting a perfect one than a regular, like somebody who pays attention. In okay. when I was in high school, but Alex, I already have that problem where I hit a perfect parlay my sixth ever time gambling and <laughs> I, I'm trying to hit it again. So, I don't think the best but if you, but the, the thing is, if you hit a uh, if you hit a perfect bracket once, Luke, you win a million dollars. No one's ever done it, it's impossible. Well, I would also bet my well, bracket. Wait, what. People have hit the perfect bracket. What are you talking no about? No one's ever hit the perfect bracket. Yes, they have. It happens no every year. No, they haven't, Dan. No, they Alex. haven't. Every year, they're like on day two. It's like uh, everybody is out. No, no, wrong. Someone hits it every year. It happens all the time. Yeah, Man, look it up. It's, <laughs> it's physically impossible to hit a perfect bracket. How is it impossible? It's literally it's impossible. Okay. okay, this says NCAA. I hate when people say, oh, it's impossible. No, it's literally answer? not impossible. NCAA.com, the longest that NCAA bracket has ever stayed perfect. Um, in 2024, the final perfect men's bracket almost made it through the first round, but number eight, Utah State's win against number nine, TCU, busted the last standing bracket of the 31st game of the tournament. The last bracket was named Metal Sticks 84, pick seven was in ESPN. So that way they did multiple brackets, pick seven. They did, they did seven brackets at least. Um, but no one's ever hit it, Dan. No, no they, have. they have. They have. No one's ever hit it. Dan, Luke they just read have. an article. Oh, oh, because journalists are just the longest, the longest, longest, ver the longest verifiable, journalists. the longest verifiable streak of correct picks uh, is 49. And that was established in 2019. Verifiable is the key word. So yeah, Dan, maybe your uncle Jimmy hit it in this fucking <laughs> First of all, my uncle Jimmy is in it three years a in a row. No. No, someone said it. I know they have. It happens every year. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. The NCAA themselves just said it. You don't think they would love to be able to say that somebody does hit it every year to give people a little bit of hope? Warren Buffett uh, has had no, a well, $1 they're not dollar. involved in the no. Warren Buffett has had a one million dollar bounty on this for the last 30 years. You can't I don't know what that means. More than a million dollars. Bounty, he's had someone try to kill somebody. Well, Alex, what are we talking Alex, about? You Alex, you could start with a dollar. And just bet the games, and you'd have more than a million by the end of it. No, I know, but I'm just saying. I don't need that, Warren Buffett's that's... fucking money. Keep your <laughs> fucking money, old man. I don't fucking want to do business with you. All right. Um, Whaley's <laughs> Angler's 99. <laughs> oh, it's like two 34 year old 115 pounders, five foot five and five foot four. I tower over these girls. Um, <laughs> I don't know. What do you want from you guys? I don't know what you want from me. It's Wayley Zang. It's Wayley Zang all day, all night. Wayley Zang. The only reason I give it to Nan Janan Nan is because Mark Zuckerberg's wife loves her for some reason more than Wayley Zang. So if it's not true, comment, Mrs. Zuckerberg. I don't know. Let me know. But I'm assuming you see everything. I'm assuming the Zuckerbergs go in a room together and they just have like an like a the wall is just every matrix. Yeah, like a, yeah, like in the mate. Yeah, like and they're just like okay, let's see, like. When, where, where has our names been mentioned? Obviously, let's start there. And then, like, like this pops up real quick. And she's like, that's not true. I love Wei Li Zhang. <laughs> hey, Luke, just to let you know, I like Yan Jinanan, but I also, just because I was in attendance to see her fight, I would have also been in attendance to see Wei Li Zhang's fight. I like both these girls equally. But I would say that if Mrs. Zuckerberg has anything to say about it, Nine Jinan wins. I, uh, I think this is a parlay buster. Unlike the uh, the people who win the NCAA tournament every year, um, I like Jan because I think that Wei Li is susceptible to counter striking, a la the Rose fight. Um, I think she's a great hammer, not a great nail. I think that uh, Jan is quicker. I, I think she's let you know. You know, Whaley's obviously an athlete. She's super strong. It's going to be a tough fight. I don't think it's a layup that Jan wins, but I think over the course of five rounds, I think that Jan can catch the timing and be the, the counter striker that, you know, is landing more efficient strikes here. I kind of like Jan in this matchup, and the, you know, the odds are only a, a nice little cherry on top here. It's a dog or pass situation, man. I'm I'm not gonna have Wei Li on on my parlays. I'm just not. It's either gonna be a blank space or it's gonna be Yan. 
Uh, I, I like Jan a little bit. I think uh, out of ten fights, why? Jan will win. Jan will win five and a half. Why? Wait. Why would you not have Whaley on any parlays? Because she's a minus three forty five favorite Holy by the time shit, we place the bets. She... Holy. Shit. Yeah, that's. Holy, why. I, I see this as a pickem. In it's not a <laughs> He's a minus 345. The only thing that gives me a little bit of cause for pause, and I got to look at the uh, the stats on Jan's takedown defense because Wei Li, she could go the grappling route, and if someone would make that argument, I would say... Ah, Wei Li is going to sub her in the first round. Wei Li can lift up Francis Ngannou. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But she's the strongest girl we have. <laughs> How many times has she actually gone that route of a fight strategy? Carlos Barza, <laughs> who beat up Yao Jana nine. You kidding me? That's Again, exactly what she it, did. It's, it's dog or pass, which means I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if Whaley won. It's dog no, or pass. You have every right to pick the dog here. I think Mrs. No, Zhang. you both picked the dog. You're both crazy. I'm picking Whaley Zhang. And when you look into it. Pick those houses with the blue roofs, they didn't burn. Luke's just picking Janan because Mark Zuckerberg's wife's, wife's like, likes her. I'm not picking Janan. I'm picking Weili Zhang. Oh, I'm picking Zhang too. Yeah. But the thing is, it's a lady fight, and it's a mirror match. And in those situations, you got to go with the fucking dog. So I'm telling everybody who's out there betting for, like, like, like if you're – like if you're just gonna bet, make one bet of the night, you know what I mean. Don't make it Weili Zhang. I'd sooner no make have it you make Weili Zhang. That's a free space. But if you're really? gonna make one bet in the night, right? No, I'm out on women's MMA. I'm I'd sorry. sooner tell you to make it Yan than fucking Weili Zhang. Is what I'm trying to say. But I personally think, for my parlay and my life and my goals, Z Zhang Weili Zhang is the right choice here. I can always hedge out on the underdog. You know what I mean. Yeah, but you, she's the, no one's gonna no one's gonna hedge out on the co-main event. Like, why wouldn't you? That's exactly because, what you hedge out. That, that that's like you've already won. Like, oh, when, dude, I look at it like the last two fights of the night. If if any like long parlay is still going, I've already fucking won. And if you don't see it that way, you either can't do math or you're a degenerate junkie addict piece of shit and should be in a gutter with a fucking needle in your arm. Because yeah, that, you're, you're somebody who has a uh, UFC gambling podcast is what you're saying. I'm saying that <laughs> if you're going to win, if you go, okay, if Weili Zhang and Pereira win, I'm going to win $1,500. So what I'll do is I will bet whatever I need to break even on Yan Jananan. And if she loses, I'll do the same thing in the next fight because you have a little bit of breathing room. You know what I mean? All I'm saying yeah, is maybe I won't win $1,500, but I'll win $800 and I'll be stress free and making money. You know what I mean? Not everyone's liquid. You don't have to be liquid. I explained to you that if you go through PayPal, you can just put money into DraftKings or FanDuel that you don't actually have in your bank account as long as you go through PayPal. <laughs> and then as long as you win, you can just put it back. Not by if you go to Billy you go Walters' to way, okay? Billy Walters actually would say this is a good method because when he was selling cars, he would go to an auction and he would get a bunch of cars on a float, which means two weeks until he gets the title in his name, he has to sell the car before the title gets into his name and he has to pay for it. So he would take $200,000 in the 80s worth of cars, park them illegally all over the streets, and then have uh, go out and himself sell them <laughs> to various people. And then he ends up paying them back, taking his profit. That's all I'm doing when I overdraft my bank account through PayPal. Take a look at you. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. <laughs> and that's exactly yeah. how I feel with this yep. Whaley Zhang. I, I put a drop. I put a drop. No, need, nobody heard anything you guys said. I I heard the drop. I'm talking now. I, I'm saying, and that's exactly how I feel about this Whaley Zhang fight. Uh, Just when I thought I was out of women's MMA, they pulled me back in. Whaley Zhang's a lock. Not a lock. <laughs> not a lock. Lock of the century, but she is 34. I didn't know she was 34. I thought she was like and, and, 19. Know. They're the same age, same height that. reach. They land the same amount. Like, it's very even. It, it's so funny because it's like you want to talk about – I'm sitting here talking about Bo Nickel being on the card to get 20,000 buys from PSU alumni. And yet <laughs> they have two Chinese people fighting for the championship, meaning no matter what, a Chinese champion will be crowned at UFC 300. Disney, The Rock, John Cena, and now the UFC. Like, we're just selling – we're selling – a portion of this card 
to China. I don't think they, uh, the Chinese don't think they have to women. buy pay per views over there. They don't. That's really no. messed up to say. Oh, uh, sorry. Look at the. Look into it. God, man, woman, dog. What that? I policy, wait, look at the policy on birthing. Uh, you're not allowed. Oh, to oh right. <laughs> <Duh>. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a great joke. That was a great joke. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Now I'm, you know. Now you I'm know. Not I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a geo geo guesser. Um. Okay. Look it up, folks. Look it up. No, I remember from being a kid. I remember when they were telling me about that as a kid. All right. So Alex Poets on Prayer, Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill. Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill. Um, I said it on the show before. I the, to, to me, the only thing that worries me about this fight is how much of a lock I feel Alex Prayer is. Um, I feel Jamal Hill, cool guy, would love to hang out with him. Objectively, his posture in there is that of a woman on the phone washing dishes yelling at her kids you know what i mean he has the posture in there of a of, of like a single mom i mean i'm dead serious he's like a single mom on a corded telephone when i see him in there with his posture it reminds me of my own mother i mean in a lot of ways like wait and, and i'm i'm just saying that is gonna get you fucking left hooked to death like that like I, that posture is just a recipe for disaster fighting alex photon Barrera. but that being said who has more Who's the one fighter with more femininity than Jamal Hill's posture? Not his whole being. He's very masculine. His posture. Israel Adesanya, who paints his nails and wears pearl necklaces. And he knocked Alex Pelotan Pereira the fuck out. <laughs> right? So maybe I'm wrong. I feel I have to be wrong with how confident I am in Pereira. Like when I see that this is a pick em, when I see, I, I feel like I, I literally want to overdraft my bank account to bet on this fight. I want to bet five thousand dollars on Pereira. You if if I mean? you remember, I bet a thousand dollars on Pereira to beat. So, so this is the correction. So, if I were to do that, I will, I will lose. So, this is telling you guys, if you're just gonna, if, if you're asking the psychic lady, if you're asking her to look at her Ouija board and the scrying devices, I don't know how, but somehow Jamal Hill is gonna win this. I guess. I mean, because I, because that's because I know the feeling I have is that this is the same feeling comes out to finish Gilbert Burns. This is the same feeling, Kevin Holland to beat Wonder Boy. This is the same feeling. It's a similar feeling I have right now, where I'm like, too good to be true. I want to be irresponsible. I want to, and, and it's almost like a self fulfilling prophecy. Like if I'm irresponsible because God is so focused on me and concerned about me, and like I'm the main character, he, whatever I do like impacts the world. You know what I mean? So it's like if I Luke decide to overdraft my bank account and make it a do or die environment for me in my life and bet $5,000 that I do not have on Alex prayer to win $5,000 more dollars with the best of intentions for the money to, to only use that money for my family and for, for the, the good of the world. If I do that, God will punish me. It'll have nothing to do with Jamal. It'll have nothing to do with his feminine hips and posture. It'll have everything to do with me and he will then get to win. So Jamal, and it has repercussions for the world since Luke's the main character. Like Gaza, that was because of that was because no, of a big bet. Know, <laughs> that was because of a big bet on Gilbert Burns. <laughs> no, that it's not it's not a butterfly effect thing. It's more direct. It's more direct. Which is why sometimes people ask me for picks and they're like, "Hey, Luke, do you, they literally hand me their cell phone." And I start to do it and I go, "What if your karma is not meant to win? I'd be blocking. I'm setting a pick for myself here." Like I don't know what your karma is. Like, I don't know if God has chosen you to win a perfect parlay tonight, but if I bring you along for my ride, God might not let me through the door, the doorway to perfect parlay Valhalla. So what I'm trying to say is that um, I have to act responsibly here. If I act responsibly, Poetan will win. If I do not behave responsibly, Poetan will lose. But what if I bet, see, it's a, such a self-fulfilling prophecy because I just tried to, to trick myself. I tried to go, I'll bet 5,000 on Jamal Hill. <laughs> you should do that <laughs> and then it's like and then i lose and it then and i'm like, gonna bet a thousand on alex Pierre again <laughs> yeah that's what we should do i'll bet five thousand on jamal hill alex you bet five thousand on alex Pereira. dan you bet one thousand on a draw no i don't want to be the draw guy <laughs> you, know, you, get to bet less, you get to bet less and when you win it's 
it's way bigger than when we win. Oh, it's yeah, hard. I get I get the math. Thank you. <laughs> one, 30 to one. You only got to be right like twice a year. No, thanks. I I'd do rather not lose a thousand dollars every week. Way. Most weeks. I'm not paying a thousand dollars like you fucking crazy assholes. I don't, I've never placed a thousand dollar bet. I've only bullshit. Done, I I've only bullshit. done it one time. <laughs> I've only done it, one time. it was, more than it was that, and it was very irresponsible. And I'll never do it again unless Alex Pierre is fighting Jamal Hill. <laughs> and if that's the case, and if it's on a UFC 300, but not just any UFC 100, a UFC 300 that's like kind of near my birthday, and not just any UFC 300, it has to have a, like. A sideways McDonald's logo for the three on the on all the promos, and it has to it has to look really weird and not a cool font at all. Only in that scenario will I ever bet a thousand dollars again, and it will happen. It will be on Alex Pierre. You got to pay it forward. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, that takes us to the prelims. We got Yuri Prosk. Hold on, no. didn't make a damn pick yet. Um, I am, I'm a little scared of the Jamal Hill injury. I don't know how that's the problem. Yeah, that is the problem. I feel like, I feel like if he's a hundred percent healthy, I'm leaning him, but it would be a close fight if it was a hundred percent healthy. So being that I don't think he's at that point, he's probably around 80%. If I were to take a medically uneducated guess, (laughs) Uh, I'm going to go with Alex Piera. Pfft, fight doesn't go the distance. Probably my actual bet here. I'm not loving either side, to be honest. I, I'm really not. Because at the end of the day, what I like is a guy who strikes down the middle. Okay? Keeps it, keeps the basics basic. And, you know, Alex Piera, he's got the hooks going. That's, you know, that's his big move, his, his left hook. But I think that what beats that is a guy like a Jamal Hill who's got that straight left. The straight left, I think, is what might be Piera's kryptonite. But again, the injury scares me off. I don't know. There's going to be a knockout either way. I think the fight does not go the distance is the actual play here. Yes, it'll be juiced up. But by the time you get there on the parlay, you're going to be offered a huge cash out. Take it. Don't take it. Either way, I think you're you're looking pretty good. So, you know what? Screw it. Jamal Hill. I'm going Jamal Hill. I'm going Jamal Hill. It's not even a huge dog. He's like plus 100. And, you know, the card is kind of based around Piera. You look at the promos. It's all based around him. So the fact that Jamal Hill is only plus 100, I think, shows that he's actually kind of the pick to win. Plus, coming off an injury, he's only plus 100. Jamal Hill's the man here. I think he's going to get it done. He's only like six months removed from an Achilles, and that's like one of the worst injuries you could possibly get. I know, man. I'm scared off. I really yeah. am. And especially, I, don't, that- I think I think it's going to be fighting in a phone booth. He's not going to have to move that much. You know, he's, it's going to be just like right in the center. It's not going to and- be much movement. He's not going to be sprawling on takedown of, uh, defenses. He's just got to stand right there, do his one twos, which is his bread and butter. I don't think he, you know, you know what I mean? I don't. I think that this is the, <laughs> <laughs> this is the Alex Piera Glover Teixeira revenge tour. Okay. They're coming through and take, they're having Alex Piera, the younger, rawer, more violent guy, come back and take everybody's skull who beat up an old man for no good. For no daggum good reason besides a piece of metal. <laughs> so I, I think Alex Pierre is a lock. I'm probably not going to bet a thousand dollars. A lock. Oh gosh. I, I think him and Whaley Zhang are locks. I think that if you look at this fight, I don't get what the fuck you're talking about. Alex Pierre throws shots down the middle all the time. He has some of the craziest leg kicks. I think that coming off of a Achilles injury, getting leg kicked by Alex Pierre does not sound. Very good whatsoever. I feel like that Achilles injury just happened like eight or nine months ago, or you know what? six months ago, or something like that. Because think about it, like the belt was vacated, and then they fought for that belt 
in November. So when did he tear his Achilles? October? And that's when the fight was booked at the latest September or at the earliest September. So he's like only six months removed from an Achilles tear, which as far as I've ever heard is the one of the worst injuries an athlete can get. Uh, Alex fucking A, you might be right, man. And at minus so eight, right. but the leg kicks, I mean, the leg kicks. Listen, if I'm talking about leg kicks for Justin Gaethje, damn, I got to be talking about leg kicks for Alex Piero, who's got some of the best in the game. And like you said, the ACL, man, come on. Don't certify Alex Pereira. Triple C. <sighs> Listen, at yeah, minus yeah. 160 odds, yeah. at minus 160 odds. It's not minus 160, is it? I think it's minus 160. When you have a guy coming off of a massive injury that is known to be one of the worst in all of sports, and he's taking on a guy who's going to target that injury from the minute that fight starts, and then you you take into account the fact that he is so devastating and how Jamal Hill fights very up and down. You know what I mean? When you're up and down, you're very vulnerable to a check hook. That's my how the best fucking weapon. And add in the mode, add in the intel. Jamal Hill doesn't have any intel on Alex Pereira. Alex Pereira has all of the intel on Jamal Hill. He has a guy who went five fucking rounds with him, and that's his coach. And was whooping his ass. The only well, way Jamal Hill wins is if I bet a thousand dollars on Alice Pereira, and God decides to punish me, and that will be the only way. No offense to Joe here. No offense to Joe, but Bruno Silva had it very close against Alex Pereira, and the fact that Bruno Silva got his ass beat by Chris Weidman at the late stages of his career, that. That's been scaring me off. Yeah, I was wondering where you were going with that because I was like, well, that makes Bruno Silva look pretty good. But I think that where I thought you were going was that, like, you know, no. slow, like, isn't it crazy, too? Like, I'm more of a friend to Weidman than anybody by by uh, saying, like, by not crediting that win because <laughs> all the people blowing smoke up his ass for getting a win against a guy who's got 10 fucking losses in Bruno Silva and has found a way to lose against m- much less decorated opponents than Chris Weidman but kept it pretty close against him. And if Weidman had to foul him to win, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. that's, to me, the story here shouldn't be, oh, Chris Weidman should keep fighting. Like, he looked great. He looked like his old self. It's like, even if that were true, guys, even if that were true, like, are we just playing pretend? Are we pretending people don't get old? Are we pretending that injuries, you can just recover from an injury and everything's, like, I get it. Yeah, you can get lucky. Like, I can go to the casino and I can overdraft my bank account and bet on Alex Pereira and lose it. Like, I can do all these things too. And it might work out and work out and work out. But the law of large numbers, it's not going to eventually, you know? And I do love Chris Wyman. You know what I mean? I do. No, you fun. don't. Shut up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. No. He's, he annoyed me, but I mean, like, I don't, <laughs> I, don't need, I don't need him to get knocked out like Bryce Mitchell. You know what I mean? But I just think that the, anim- the MMA gods are righteous and just and, you know, something's coming his way. Paid in blood, paid in full. Like, you know, blood in, blood out. Like, something's coming his way. That's all I got to say. Hey, what happened to Chris Weidman when he broke Anderson Silva's poor leg? What did the MMA gods do to him? Blood in, blood out. So, yeah. He sat there with Michael Bisping in that post-fight interview. He did. So. <laughs> but meanwhile, Brian Battle also sat with Michael Bisping. And I think if you got Michael Bisping alone with 12 or 6 loggers in him and you said, hey, <laughs> do you think, what is he doing? And you said, if you, you said, okay, if Bisping, like, which of those do you think was not that bad, and which one do you think was absolutely on purpose? You know what I mean? Like, you got him with two eye pokes. <laughs> I, got you, I get one can be like, I get, I don't know. I'm just saying. It seemed like it was. I believe Jim Miller. Believe all Jimin. That's fucking illegal. I think Dan's dog's actually acting up. I don't think he's just, I don't think he's afraid of what I'm saying. I thought that's what he was doing at first, but. I was trying to find the perfect Cody Garbrandt drop because um, Cody Garbrandt. I'm a uh, sorcerer. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he said, I'm, 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 a, I'm a sorcerer. I can't get knocked out. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Cody Garbrandt is like, the, the, here are my heroes of MMA. Cody Garbrandt, Rampage Jackson, of course, 
who couldn't love Rampage Jackson, Ian Gary, um, Tito Ortiz, Brendan Schaub. It's like, uh, oh, that's your takeaway? Who's who's another like who's another just a loaf of bread? <laughs> like just all marshmallows between the ears. Is that what it is? <laughs> all oatmeal north of the eyebrows. Um <laughs> man, a great example of like who you're talking like kind of talking Trevor about. Peak, Nate no, Landware. No, no. no, Trevor. These Peak. are all just like no, 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 no. Trevor I, Peak. I just love these guys. <laughs> I love these guys. These are my guys. Trevor I'm, Peak is not one of those guys. I Trevor you know, Peak. Is a great guy. What are you talking about? But he, he doesn't fall in the same category as, you know, Cody Gold. Not Ian Gary. Ian Gary is one of the great heels of our generation. Trevor Peak is not bull- – yeah, I mean, listen. Those, those are your guys. We all got our guys. I, you know. <laughs> Cody Garbrandt is delightful, okay? Everything- no, I feel like Joe Lowe sold me on I feel like Joe Lowe sold me on the boxing ball video. I really thought he was going to be like, that's actually pretty impressive. I, I swear to God, I thought he was going to be like, because he's seen the UFC fighters not be able to do Luke, it. Luke, nobody gives a fuck about hitting that punching mill. Shit, dude. What's going to happen when I go down to North Carolina and knock one of Joe's uh, <laughs> out in a fucking smoker? What's going to happen? Like, what's going to happen then? Like, what's going to happen then when I Charlie Zellin off the whole situation the fuck out? Like, <laughs> I'll do steroids. Injected it in, in his asshole. We can go down there fucking on steroids. I'll be like, none of you are on steroids, you USADA guys. <laughs> Let's go. Smoker, right? It's a smoker, right? No drug tests in a smoker. Let's do this. Hell yeah. I'm crystal meth. <clears throat> I'm all about I'm starting to cycle for my for my match with Dan. I, I don't even need it, but I just think you might as well. You know? I need you to belly to back suplex Dan. Uh I I'm afraid I might like, Dan, we're gonna train. In May, when we go to Arizona, we're going to train in the desert. Me and you, we're going to run mountains. I'll, I'll, how about this? Speaking of, like, giving Joe Selecki Tafa and then doing slot fighting in the second round, I'll give you an, an edge since, you know, you, you're you you're pretty much like a civilian, mostly untrained, white belt, if you will. Um, you, you love running. Running's your thing. So me and you will go out to the desert and we'll run. We'll run up a mountain, okay? And then we'll fight at the top of the mountain. Just straight up fight, not jujitsu. All right, we don't have to fight, I guess, if you're gonna be soft, but we can do like jujitsu, yeah, with slaps. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm in on that. We can do that, and then and then uh, that'll give you an edge, you know. <laughs> Over we what? Both Over will not want to fucking wrestle by the time we get up there. We'll, we'll get up there, we'll be like, no, nah, fuck that, fuck that, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck off. We'll, we'll stop halfway and be like, yeah, yeah fuck that. that. Hey, that was good though. That was good though. We can get <laughs> I'm actually afraid to wrestle Dan now because I saw I saw a video of two guys. One guy was a wrestler and the other guy wasn't. And he slammed the guy and the guy didn't know how to get slammed very well. And uh, he like broke the guy's shoulder and gave him a concussion. And I was like, yeah, maybe I just shouldn't wrestle Dan because I, I feel like I'm going to put him in a wheelchair or something. Hey, guess what? I've never broken a bone in my life. You've broken your own ball sack. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck. That was funny as shit. It's true. Alex is a fucking walking catastrophe and a hypochondriac. The two do not go hand in hand well. He's in and out of the fucking doctor's offices. Dude. He's always in and out. Like, he's in and out for things he hasn't. He, they're like, you're fine. And then he's in and out for stuff like, oh, shit, no. Like, no. And, then he doesn't, and then he won't go for like snowboarding injuries. He gets like mad fucked up and then doesn't go. And then goes, I'm like, I'm like you're all mixed up. Like, you, you're not going for the stuff you should be going for. You... They're scamming you in certain situations. They're like making you elect into surgeries you don't need. It's like crazy. Yeah. You guys only do the half of it. It's insane. But anyway, um, we're all going to be good. We're all good friends. Let's move forward. Let's just say I might have Let's to go on me. medical leave very soon. <laughs> dude, he's, he's, he's like, I got to get my gallbladder removed. I'm like, dude, they're just fucking looking at you. Like, they probably see his chart. They go, see dollar ching, signs. Ching, 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 ching. <laughs> like, this guy loves getting surgery. He must be a drug addict. He must be trying to get pills. <laughs> Let's give him what he wants. That's our <laughs> medical system for you guys. Um, not medical advice, not financial advice. Alex is also not doing anything drug seeking. I'm telling you, he's just a hypochondriac. <laughs> I'm not a hypochondriac. I'm just always sick. Okay. All right. Turn your laptop down, you fucking idiot. <laughs> you do have the control. <laughs> you don't have to go away. Just, just so I have to hear your volume. <laughs> But if I go away, I can still hear you guys. It doesn't fucking work. I guess I can press the mute button. 
You <laughs> all right, guys. This is dude. You know why we're all mixed up? Because we had to do main card for Allen versus Curtis. Now we had to do main card for fucking UFC 300. Now we're going backwards. Bro, what are we doing? Over and build up. It's like, but I kind of like it. I kind of like this. It feels like it feels like uh, you know. I'm, I'm like what what I'm doing is this in my head. I'm going, look at this, Luke. How equipped are you after four years of doing the show? What a celebratory month. You know, right now we're it's April 2nd, everybody. May 9th represents the end of year four of this show. So I'm in full balloon celebration mode. I just got through two birthdays in the month of March. I just got through Easter. I had a lot of fucking heavy lifting to do in March, guys. And now I'm kind of in a little bit of a grace period before I move out of my apartment on ironically. Whoa. Ironically, the same day that we started our podcast, May 9th, is when I was oh. in my apartment. So I have to pack everything up. And you know what I was talking about with I, I was talking, I was thinking about getting like a like a like a section eight studio apartment in Baltimore or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, no, hold on, hold on. And as a side thing, as a side thing, like find something less than a thousand bucks a month rent and just make it a studio for the podcast. You know what I mean? So big things coming, big ideas, Section 8 housing ideas, um, you know, <laughs> different things are in the works. But um, year five is coming and it's coming with a fucking fury because as I mentioned in the beginning. How of are the, you even applicable for se Section 8 housing? I, I don't mean Section 8. I just mean like, like find a really shitty apartment for rent. You know what I mean? Like the shittiest apartment that is possibly for rent. You know what I mean? Like the lowest amount of money I could possibly pay for an apartment. And then, but just use it to like, you know, make like, like cameras and like stuff like that. And also, why just, don't you just why don't you just get an apartment with an extra room? <laughs> because, <laughs> all right, let us know in the comments. Um, we have to move on, guys. We have to, Alex, we can't do this one night. You can't keep questioning my ideas, you have to just kind of let them play out. Like, the audience will comment. You know, you're, you're saying what the audience is going to say in the comments. I'm trying to bait them to be like. I'm just trying to figure out where we're going from here. I'm, <laughs> I have no idea what we're doing. In just another room. What an idiot. Like, I get it. I'm a dumbass. Okay. Like, I can't be loud in another room. I'm in another room now. Duh. I'm in another room right now. I don't. You think I don't have rooms? Got to get sound. You have fucking rooms, Alex? I already fucking have another room. You got to get soundproofing technology. You got to get a microphone. You don't have to talk as loud when you have a microphone. Bingo. Soundproof the walls. I'm just looking for big ideas. Like <laughs> my ideas sound pretty big. You no, your ideas are these are small ideas. Like, like soundproofing. Oh, soundproofing. Everybody has soundproofing. Talking about a second apartment. Do you know what I'm saying? It'll have a couch too. It'll it'll have an Xbox. Like it's, it's like a <laughs> kitchen. This is just couch. You're you're thinking of it all wrong. I get the second apartment, right? <laughs> and I start to do this, and then it starts to be like so cool. And then all of a sudden, we get a second apartment. You know what I mean? Now we have a clubhouse. Now we have now. It doesn't matter. The podcast is the podcast. It's neither here. Hangout spot. Hangout somewhere, uh, a work space. Work a clubhouse, space. A safe house. Grand Theft Auto. I have been telling you, I have been living a GTA type lifestyle lately. <laughs> a stop off point. Very yes, very. And good. with you two hyper local and me only two hours away, we could find a spot forty five minutes. But really, I'm only ninety minutes away, so that's what I was thinking. Forty five minutes, a little happy medium. Forty five minutes from, you know, maybe like by a lake, little <laughs> tiny house, maybe a tiny house. Alex, when's your move out date? You're in May, as well. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna say exactly when because I don't want it to be flooded with paparazzi. <laughs> No, it's very smart because actually I took a test at work today and it was like one of the things, you know, like uh, it was like cybercrime. You know what I mean? Mm. Like don't get hacked on the work computer basically is, was the test. You, everybody has to take them. And it was I saying, that they, that. yeah, you, you told me that you got, you got fished. Basically. I got hacked. I got yeah, hacked. Right. <laughs> don't actually don't tell people that. Don't tell them that. <laughs> I'm that was, telling you. I'm that very was hackable. Dude, that I'm was very like, hackable. Really, it was literally in the test. It was like, don't tell people how stupid you are about fucking uh, this stuff. All you gotta do for me is give me, give me, feed me a compliment in that in that opening uh, thing. So, but, oh hell yeah! yeah. <laughs> click it. You know, if anybody posts a link in the Discord, like don't click it. And if anybody tries to be your friend in Discord, don't be their friend and don't accept any messages and don't click anything. I'll accept all of them. If any fan oh. sends you anything, do not click it. Just to let you know. I, I, I think we talked about this, but just to let you know, don't. And by fan, I mean audience member. I don't. 
Fans, <laughs> audience, <laughs> wherever you are, send me whatever you got. I'll click it. Fan of yours. You know what I mean? they might, they I'll might. click it. It'll be worth it. We just, you, I got to edit that all out. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, it's on me. It's on me. It happens to me that it's on me. Uh, but hey, Alex, are you? Are, hold on, hold on. Alex, are you officially moving to the spot? I think you're moving at, which is very close to me. Yes. You have it. Okay. Cool. Moving well, on. Don't Go say ahead. it's very close to you because you said your address on this before. Stop. If you guys can find Dan, two three address, Main Street. Sift through the old episodes. If you can find Dan's old address, timestamp it in the comments, and I'll give you a five dollar. Uh, I could give a fuck less. No, oh yeah, yeah. We got to start giving out rewards. No five dollar prize. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we gotta get up. Oh. What are we doing here? What do we? What do we got? What do we got? We're going what to a prelim or? Um, should, it's it's Yuri Prohaska versus Alexander Rakic. An amazing fight should have happened a long time ago. Um, guys, this is the UFC 300 breakdown, but it's also sort of like a celebration party. Like I said, May 9th represents Year Five. Big things are coming. Okay, moving on. Alexander Rakic, Yuri Prohaska. I'm going with Yuri Prohaska. I'm 31 years old. He's Coming in off the loss to Alex Pereira, a fight that I Wait, picked. Why three. are we breaking down the prelims for this? Shouldn't we just go into the. Yeah, I guess we should. I guess we should. But I do want to talk about these prelims. But all right, yeah, we can just go into the thing, you know. All right, we'll just we'll save these prelims. How, how long have we done? What's what's the time? Oh, wow. Hour and a half. Yeah, we, we can't. Almost we can't. nine o'clock. <laughs> we can't keep going. All right, guys, if you want to get the prelims for this, you're going to have to wait until next week for UFC 300. But we got Yari Prohaska, Alexander Ragic, Calvin Cater, Aljamain Sterling, Holly Holm, Kayla Harrison, Sadiq Youssef versus Diego Lopez. I was so excited to talk with you guys about that tonight. Sadiq Youssef versus Diego Lopez. Jalen Turner versus Sonato Moicano. Uh, Jessica Andraj, Marina Rodriguez, Bobby Green, Jim Miller, Davis Figueredo versus Cody Garbrandt. Let's just give the people Sadiq Yusuf versus Diego Lopez. Just a sneak peek at what the Patreon looks like. What do you, you veto me? Veto me if you don't want to. Veto me if you don't want to. We, no, we, we still have to break down the prelims for Allen versus. We'll we'll make that one relatively quick. That's six. It's six fights. It's six fights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Take Is real? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, six. Uh, fights. We did six. So yeah. break it down. Break it down. What do you got? All right, dude, Sadiq Youssef, obviously a big friend of the show. So I used to train with a guy who actually trained at Lloyd Irving, knew Sadiq, obviously. So I feel a big-time kinship with Sadiq, almost as close as I feel with Joe Selecki, who I kind of damaged that relationship by bringing up the Weidman stuff, I think. Maybe, I don't know. Um, it's all love. Everybody knows I love Chris Weidman. I, I, <laughs> we have to move on. All my homies love Chris Weidman. <laughs> And you know what's funny is it's like the more I thought about it, as Joe was saying it, I was actually like, why am I being such a bitch about this? You love eye pokes and you don't care about eye pokes and you don't care about and you always talk shit on fighters who uh don't who who like get like upset by eye pokes, like Chris Curtis, for example. You yeah, know? yeah. I, or, or Bilal Muhammad. Like, so I'm like, now that I'm thinking about it, Chris Wyman's the fucking man. And uh and <laughs> Bruno Silva the most <laughs> is such a bitch, like the like the biggest bitch, you know what I mean? You got a guy with one leg. He broke his leg in his last fight. He broke his leg in the fight before that. And he's 50. And you can't beat him. And you're Bruno Silva. <laughs> go the hell home. Back. Go go out of the UFC. Back to Bellator. Wherever the fuck you're from. He he should be in the B leagues because Wyman should be retired. That's the reality. You got beat by a guy. You got beat by a, a walking uh, retiree. And the worst thing he did was you gave Weidman hope. And now Weidman's going to go out there. And he's going to get himself get hurt. Destroyed. Now destroyed. he's going to get himself hurt. He's going to get eye poked. He's gonna get eye poked again. You know what I mean? Like he's he, he dude. Weidman's gonna end up. He does. Weidman I, still doesn't understand the karmatic balance. He doesn't of understand MMA. The, he, And now, now here he's gonna be his next. His next. Uh, he's little, gonna break little, both his legs. He's, he's his next interview his thing. It'll be like a documentary. It'll be like, oh, I see him sitting there right now. I'm like, when you break your leg in the UFC, I, mean, I can't do a Long Island accent. <laughs> can, can one of you? It's like what, when you break your leg in the UFC. You know, I saw it coming, and I – when you break your leg in the – or he goes, he, goes, he, goes, he goes, when you are sitting there with your leg broken, you think this is the worst thing that can ever happen to you. But then the other worst thing that can happen happens. You know what I mean? And then that's going to be the next fight. So it'll be like, he kicked my balls. They went up into my, my – I don't know. Yeah. You know I mean? and then, or he, punched, he poked my eyes. They went down. It'll be like the balls, the eyeballs going down into the nuts. Or the nuts going up into the eyes. It'll be some some foul, right? Will like karmically happen, and it'll be like it was worse than the leg break. You know what I mean? Like it'll be like it's like no, like 
But that's what, yeah. So anyway, I love Chris Wyman, but I think that they're gonna have Detour Belt TRT Tour come back and kick his eyeball out of his head, like he did Michael Bisbee. Remember when he said? Remember when he said, "Who wouldn't want to see?" Did you watch the interview where he's like, "Who wouldn't want to see Chris Wyman box Anderson Silva?" <laughs> right? But it's like, how about Chris Wyman box Vitor Belfort? <laughs> no, 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 no. How about it? If he does that, then that really that that'd be crazy. Bel- Belfort Vitor, he's like actually an amazing boxer you know what i mean he's more dangerous now than when he was in the ufc i guarantee it like because <laughs> now you can't up kick him or you can't kick him right up the middle like leo de machita and anderson silva did i'd much rather see him box anderson silva and vitor belfort to be honest that'd be those would be so entertaining and fun to watch than him per- burn himself in the eye or why even being even in there with Brad Tavares and Bruno Silva seems dirty? Like, it just feels dirty. It's like, I don't want to part it. When he was losing to Romero, when he was losing to Rockhold, that's like who he should be in there with. Even the Uriah Hall fight. It's like Uriah Hall is not a contender. You know what I mean? Uriah Hall is not a fucking contender. Like, I'm like, he should be like, why, why is Wyman getting thrown at these guys? I don't know. Everybody does, I guess. Here I am. Now I feel bad that I'm out here trying to like defend Chris Wyman. I'm like, that's going to win back equity. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Right. You are such the balls on my mouth. All right, let's move on. Just move on. Uh, all right, all right. Yusuf versus Diego Lopez. Luke, heartbreaker of a fight. Two guys I love. Diego Lopez, I fucking love this guy more than life itself, dude. This guy gives me hope every single day. Whenever I see this guy, it makes me so happy. The delight when I saw him in the corner of Alexa Grasso, I was like, Alexa Grasso ain't fucking losing this fight. Um, I love him. I'm going with Diego Lopez. Just because I know he's ironclad. I mean, I love Sadiq Youssef too, but he's got too much else going on right now. And I'm going with uh, I'm going with Diego Lopez. Dream it, believe it, and make it happen. Too dynamic, too hearty, too fast, too competent on the ground, too slick of a striker. Um, takes everything Sadiq gives and is more tenacious, more after it. Uh, I didn't like how Sadiq performed in that Barboza fight. I know he didn't either. It was his biggest opportunity to date main event time. But I don't know that he switched it around in five months. I don't know that he corrected things in five months. Meanwhile, four months ago, uh, Diego Lopez is surging with confidence, coming out, knocking out Pat Sabatini in a barn burner, um, somebody who we have a lot of respect for. So, yeah, I love me some Diego Lopez in this fight. Um, but I love Sadiq Youssef. Go watch on Professional Breakdown. I love it's one of my favorite, favorite things to watch. What do you guys think? Not sure how I feel about this one. Alex, can you go on the Sadiq Yusuf train? Then maybe I'll split the difference. Hate to say it, but I will not be going on the Sadiq Yusuf train. Too sexy, baby. It's too sexy to go with Lopes right now. Yeah, Lopes is the sexy hot new toy. Um, boy toy, too, with that haircut. <laughs> Ride that Lopes train. Choo choo. He literally looks like your prototypical like pool boy. Like, Little mouth on him. Bing bing bing. Bing 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 bing. Um, but yeah, I'm going with Lopes. I I feel like he's like a a younger version of Edson Barbosa who wasn't able to take the shots of Yusef, which made that fight a lot closer than it had to be. I think Diego Lopes is gonna come in there way more tenacious. Uh, maybe not as dynamic as an Edson Barbosa, but way more tenacious. Hey, bro, do you remember when I said Diego Lopez can do anything? <laughs> I meant it. I got something else to say. Remember when I came on this podcast and I said <laughs> that the fight that can save UFC 300, the fight that should be on UFC 300, the fight that it, I want to see the most um, is Manel Cap versus Kai Kara France too? Mm-hmm. Well, guess what fight is one week later? What? Guy Car France versus. Not, not one week later, but uh, the next <laughs> UFC event. I'm no, going to guess. It's Mateus Nicolau versus Manel Cap, too. No, nah, it just got canceled. Really? Yeah, Manel Cap is out. It's Alex mm-hmm. Perez now versus uh, Nicolau. Turbo. Dude, yeah. well, good, because I want to see Manel Cap fight Guy Car France. That's what I want to see. That's the fight. That's the grudge match of the century. All right, guys. Um, so Alex is going with Diego Lopes. He can do anything. He's like Christian Bale. He can do anything. Damn. I'm going with Super Sadiq Youssef. Uh, 
Dan, I think every single fight we've picked tonight, Luke and I have been aligned, and you have won the opposite. Listen, Except they don't call me devil's advocate, Dan, for a reason, all right? And I could be the devil's advocate because it's not Easter Sunday no more, so I could be the devil, all right? I'm wearing red for a reason, guys. Pick up on the signs. Uh, Diego Lopes, he's raw, okay? He's very raw. You know, you get him on the ground, he'll submit anybody. Sadiq Yusuf, he's not going to get on the ground with this guy. His wrestling is too good. Um, it's going to be a striking match. And guess what? Guess who's too technical, too sound, too uh, well-educated in a larger arena in a larger cage than um, Mr. Lopez has been fighting in? That is Mr. Sadiq Yusuf. I see him sticking a jab in the face of Mr. Lopez all night long. Listen, UFC 300, filled with guys and gals that we all love. Some people got to lose. Our darlings are going to lose one point or another, especially on this card, all right? Sadiq Youssef is going to get the win by decision, by decision. Dan, with the guy with like a three-inch reach disadvantage, four-inch reach advantage is going to be peppering the job out there all night against Diego Lopes. I love that doesn't that. mean dick. Three inches? I, I'll give you three inches. <laughs> no, this says that Sadiq has a 71-inch reach. And oh, it's only one and a half inch reach. But he's two inches taller than him. And I mean, I think that you know, the, the reach measurements on topology are about as good as the odds on topology. Okay. Like, Listen, reach doesn't matter as much as ape. Tell me about the ape. What's going on with that? Well, what I, what I think is that I saw on Sadiq Yusuf's Instagram. Here we go, guys. Here's what you came here for, right? This is what you fucking came here for, okay? Um, on Sadiq Yusuf's Instagram he or his YouTube channel, he posted that he was offered a small role in a Netflix Marvel type show, right? Um, it wasn't a Netflix Marvel type show. It was some sh other shit, but I'm just drunk and kind of half remembering it. But anyway. A 2B, <laughs> a 2B a small, universe. Yes, a little like character in an animated show. He's going to do the voice for it. It was going to be based around like you know, but he did such a good job that they offered him more opportunities with it and like made it a reoccurring role. My point is, while I'm very happy for Sadiq and I hope that he gets more opportunities like that, that is the moment where I jump ship as a better because I see that Diego Lopez doesn't speak English very well at this point and isn't being offered the same kind of opportunities. Uh, and is only making money fighting. So that's where he has to make his bread and butter. That's what he's focusing on 100% of the time. Sadiq's doing voiceover work now. That is very hard. It takes a lot of hours and is extremely labor intensive. Plus, you have to memorize the lines or actually at least study them a little bit. Um, and then you're just kind of daydreaming about that. Well, Luke, Diego Lopes has a side hustle too. What is it? He sells pictures of Alexa Grasso's feet. Money add then multiply. <laughs> Money add then multiply. I call it man for mad. Allegedly, so I've been told. Ben Cork cool. ready. Yeah. Ben Cork cool. ready. Yeah. That <laughs> one twice. Um, okay. Love it, love it, love it. And I already knew that because he's got uh, my debit card information. Oh. <laughs> Sign up for the Patreon so we can get more pictures of Alexa Grasso's feet. Everybody, thank you very much. Um, she gives them away for free. You don't even need to buy them. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <sighs> uh, okay, so Jalen Turner, Hanato Moicano. We're not breaking this down. <laughs> we'll go next week. Uh, thank you, guys. It's going to be a great match. Holy shit. Hanato Moicano, big brass balls. Big fucking steel balls for taking on Jalen Turner. Pick quick turnaround after that Drew Dover fight. That's it. That's it. I mean, Hanato Moicano, my respect to you. My, my respect to you. My, my brother, my respect to you. Um <laughs> Let's move on. Thank you, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed the episode. Honestly, I fucking killed. I, I killed it, but I also didn't. So I'm sorry if I annoyed you. I'm sorry if I didn't do my best. Um, I was nervous and um, had a long day. So, like, here it is. It was Joe. We asked him the questions. I didn't get to the hard questions uh, that I wanted to get to. Um, but we had a lot to talk about. Short time. I hope you liked it. Comment. Let me know what you would have asked. Maybe Joe will hop in and he'll comment and he'll, he'll, he'll answer your questions. Um, if you're still watching by now, I feel like you deserved a little bit of an explanation. So I'm just going to give the people still watching a little, a little something, a little bit, a little behind the scenes. Just my personal opinion is I could have done better. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay.
I, I shouldn't have brought you're up the great. You're I should have brought the wide. You're captain of the ship, Luke. Come on. You're, you're, the great. you're great. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. But I, I just feel like maybe I'm, I'm hoping Joe didn't leave thinking, man, what the fuck? Luke really backed me into a corner there with that Wyman stuff. Like, I hope that's not what he thought. I know it's not my intention. And no, because you didn't show your true colors. And he thought that you were a Wyman fan as well. So he did not think that at all. Well, because once I, well, because when he took the complete opposite stances, me, I was like, well, I don't want to fucking make the whole episode about this. And I already said it on the last episode what I really thought about the situation. So I was like, no need to reiterate, but the audience will certainly find it humorous that they know from another episode how I really feel about it. So I was like, uh, I'm just going to shut the fuck up. And maybe I, I really left it up to you guys. I was like, maybe one of them will throw me under the bus and that'll be kind of my cue to like fall on my sword here. But, I don't you know, want to do that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I would just so you know, in the same way that when you swore to me that uh, what's his name, Jewel, uh, fucking what's his name, Charles Jordan won against Charles Woodson, and I was like, yeah, I was like, damn, uh, like I can't believe Dan lied to me like that, but I'm also like proud that Dan <laughs> was willing to go that far, and like, like I respect him. You know what I mean? Like I would, I would have been like, yeah, it's just my turn. Like I do, like I have to do this for this. For, it's karma. Something Chris Weidman will never understand. Okay. Can you look into it? Thank you, everybody. Thank you all for being here. Okay, I feel better now. Thanks for talking me up, guys. Guys, leave a nice comment. It really goes a long way with me. I really appreciate it. I need it. Thank you. Um, and, and if you do good to me, God will do good to you. We already talked about this in, uh, earlier in the episode. I'm the, I'm, I'm... And if you compliment Dan in the comments, he might just give you a social security. <laughs> if you send Dan, <laughs> look at his fucking old cryptocurrency information. It's all good. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining the show. Thanks for being here, everybody. Uh -huh.